cheese. <gasps> the F word and travel. With an HSBC Global Money account, you can drop f***s from Acapulco to Zurich. That means no f***s here. Bonjour. No f***s here. Howdy. And definitely no fees here. Pay no HSBC fees overseas with a global money account. HSBC UK. Opening up a world of opportunity. Available to HSBC UK customers with an eligible current account. Exclude some accounts such as the HSBC Basic Bank account. For mobile banking app users only. Non-HSBC fees may apply. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection. Behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist, and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process in discussions between the authors, narrators, producers, and post production teams that bring them all together, as well as guests who have listened to the audiobooks and have questions for the creative teams. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. And today I am with Nancy Martin, the author of From the Summer of Love to the Valley of the Moon, a memoir. Nancy, welcome. Thank you. So I know that that your book was published initially just weeks before the lockdown. And I understand you had a series of readings and a lot of plans set up. Tell us a little bit about what happened at that point. Well, much like everyone else's life, mine pretty much came to a halt. All the bookstores were very uncomfortable with people touching books, and many of them were taking orders and taking books out to the curb. And so I had, as you said, quite a number of appearances lined up. And of course, they were all canceled. And So that's not a good thing when you have a good book come out. Yeah, that's a lot to have to suddenly adjust to. I know we were all making adjustments at that time, certainly many big adjustments in our lives. But yeah, that would have been tricky. So now now you're just releasing your audiobook version. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your decision in light of what happened back in just in the pandemic 2020. Sure. Well, just to backtrack a step, I often go out to fairs and shows and whatever and take the book. I'm also a jeweler, and so I always take the book with me. And wherever I take the book, it sells amazingly well. People seem to have a really serious curiosity about the hippie era. And what Mm -hmm. happened then, and it's not just baby boomers, but teenagers and everyone in between seems to be really curious about this. So the book continues to just sell really well, but I would really like to give it another chance for a whole lot more people to experience it. And that's why I chose to put it in audiobooks more. Yeah. There certainly are, I think, a growing number of us who really are predominantly audiobook listeners. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great way to experience a book. And this also then is giving you sort of another additional release, letting people opportunity, really, then to let your following know, hey, there's something new that's happening. That's right. Now, is this, is the edition that is coming out in audio, is that the same edition or is that, is, were there any changes in the text from the time that you released it in print? There is quite some time, a couple of years actually, after I released the book, I wrote a piece for, I'm a member of an organization where I live called Redwood Writers and they have writing contests regularly and I submitted a piece which ultimately got published in an anthology called Those Colorful Streets. But it wasn't until after I wrote it that I realized that really it was the prequel to my book. It's being put on the audiobook as a prequel to the book. Nice. Yeah. So the journey continues and it's interesting that it's come back to that that prequel moment. Now, let's talk a little bit about the content of your book. And What initially was it 
what moment in your life was it that where you thought, I need to write about this, I need to write my memoir? Do you remember what that moment was, what that inspiration was? Actually, there are too many to recount because I've had a very unusual life. And all throughout my life, people have been telling me that I should write about it. And I've always been a journaler, fortunately. And I've been writing always. I thought when I was a young person that I would become a a journalist. And so in 2015, after my husband passed away, I had a lot of time on my hands. And I sat down at the computer and it just came pouring out. It's as if I opened up a spigot and could not turn it off. Wow. Now, did you find in that moment, knowing that you had a lot of journaling that had taken place over the years, were you finding that you were, that it was pouring out before you looked at the journal entries? And tell tell me this about how your journaling and that sort of uh, body of material, if you will, that you had built up over the years, how that interplayed with your writing process. Well, I was able to use it for a reference, which is really great. And the other thing I decided to do is do a no- I did a number of interviews in the book. So the book has a whole section about the wine growing area of Kenwood, California, where there are a number of quite well known wineries and where St. Francis Winery, my, my late husband, was the founder of St. Francis Winery, and and we lived in Kenwood. And I started interviewing people there, and the interviews are very interesting and historically significant, I think. And so it all just started coming together. Nice, nice. And I'm actually reminded of a time in my life when I was Right, I was actually writing a, a theater piece, a one-woman show about my life. Was, my memoir was I did as a stage piece, and I, and looking back at journal entries from quite many years prior, I was finding that I there was so much that my I had recorded that I didn't quite remember that way. Did you find that also to be the case? It was really helpful to go back and look so that I could be accurate. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting how as we move forward in life, I guess it's our perspective in part and probably just time giving us some distance from it, that that change that takes place. I find that really fascinating. And I know you also have, including there's a in your book, your audio book, there's a discussion about or a lot of the content is about mental health and about domestic violence and abuse Let's dive in a little bit, if you don't mind, to to any what challenges you may have experienced in terms of writing some of that more challenging content since you had lived through it. Well, of course, you have to be careful. And at the time I was writing it, my most recent husband, Joe Martin, had passed away. But then in short succession, Michael Barclay, an ex-husband, and Bill Vitt, my daughter's father, also both passed away. Mm-hmm. So it freed me up a little bit to actually really tell the truth. Yeah. What was that like then for you, being able to experience that sort of transition of feeling like you could tell the truth at that point? Well, people always ask me, well, was it cathartic to write the book? Well, certainly it was. And I remember doing a lot of laughing and crying while I was writing it. And I lived at the top of the mountain in kind of a secluded place, and I was alone. And also, a bit, a, the fire of 2017 had raged up the mountain through my neighborhood, taking out the majority of my neighborhood and coming right up to all four perimeters of my house. So I was living in a fire zone. It was horrific was just horrible. And I was trying to sell the property. And of course, I was in this fire zone. So it took me three years to get that property sold. I had to take a beating on it because I was in this terrible fire zone. But I really was all alone up there. Yeah. 
Did you find that that kind of solitude was helpful to you at all in the process of writing? Well, that period of time was extremely painful and traumatic, having Mm. driven through fire to escape and being displaced from my home for quite a long time because of the fire damage. And But I'm a solitary person, both being a jeweler and and an author are solitary endeavors. And yes, I always do better when I have my space. Yeah. So at this point, as you look back on the audiobook process, are there things that stand out to you about the process that that perhaps may have been a surprise to you or that you felt like, oh, wow, I would have loved to know that in advance or anything that our listeners who may have a book that they're considering putting into audio, that they might benefit from your experience with the process? Sure. Well, now that I'm engaged in this process, so many people tell me that they will now only listen to audiobooks. And so... That's very interesting to me. I did not realize that. One of the things that was fun and interesting for me was listening to the choices of the various narrators that I was offered. And I think I was offered maybe a dozen different narrators, and there was just one totally clear choice for me. Nice. Yeah. Can you identify what it was about that voice in that moment when you were selecting? Can you identify what it was that really spoke to you? Yes. Well, I've had a number of people tell me that they've purchased audiobooks and that the narrator was just so, I don't know, flatlined that they did not finish the book. And this particular narrator, you could hear her voice smiling, you could hear it laughing. She really emoted appropriately for what I was writing. That's great. Thank you for so articulating those thoughts because I think for many people it's a hard decision about you know the casting decision and it's not always quite as clear. But then also it depends on the selection of the voices that you have in front of you. Let's take a short pause. We'll be right back. Getting your memoir into audio can be a delicate process, best treated with a nurturing and supportive approach. Many authors assume that when a memoir is recorded, it needs to be in the author's voice. And while sometimes that is best, it is not always the best option. At Pro Audio Voices, we'll work through that decision with you and support you in the production process, whichever way you choose. If you decide to narrate, we set you up for success with a range of options. From having an audio engineer and director on the line for every recording session, to getting you properly set up for recording on your own. If we hire a professional narrator, we'll make sure the voice is the right fit for you and your memoir. At Pro Audio Voices, your story is important to us. Let's inspire the world together. Going back to the content of the book, let's talk a little bit about the afterword. Tell us about what your thinking was about that the afterword and what you wanted to have happen for your listeners as a result of including it. Well, the afterword is entitled Stigma and Shame. And in my last marriage to my husband, Joe Martin, I experienced a lot of effects for his bipolarity. That's not an easy thing to live with. And so the afterword was a a short essay and chronology on the political failure in attempts to bring helpful mental health parity to all Americans. So that there are a lot of facets to that. Health parity comes in the form of medical assistance, but it also coincides hand in hand with insurance assistance, of which there is none. And so the chronology goes through the history of the various attempts to pass bills to establish mental health parity for all Americans, as I said. And it started in the 60s, and it has been attempted over and over again with no success. It never has a bill been passed to help us. Yeah. I interviewed a county supervisor by the name of Shirley Zane, who, much to my surprise, agreed to see me. 
And a quote from her is, patients are grossly undertreated, discriminated against, and seemingly must fight to obtain treatment for mental health. Yeah. What's your personal take on why we have, there's so much stigma around mental health? Well, I think it's getting better. You People are really starting to uh, discuss it now. You see things on TV. There's a lot of being written and discussed about teenage mental health, which to me is so sad and a lot of suicide. And of course, there's, there is stigma with that. And not everyone is willing to admit that they need help. Um, as we know, men are not generally willing to admit that they need help. And so it, it's gone on and on. But I think the greater fault lies with, with the insurance industry. Yeah. What is the impact that that you would like to have with your book and your audio book? What would you love to see happen as a result of this content getting out there in the world? I would hope that people would listen to the afterword and understand what has happened historically and vote in favor of change. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, not only for this time that we've taken together, but also I want to thank you for writing, taking the time, the effort, putting that all that energy and care into the writing of your book and the and the production of your audiobook so that this content can get out into the world. Thank you. How can our listeners best learn more about you and your work and what website might you want them to go to? Yes, I do have a website. It's Nancy J. Martin, author, N-A-N-C-Y-J-M-A-R-T-I-N-A-U-T-H-O-R.com. And I use my middle initial because Nancy Martin is a really common name. And in the literary industry, there are many Nancy Martins out there. So I use my middle initial J. Yeah, that's good. Smart. And also your audiobook is going to be available on amplifyaudiobooks.com. So we want to encourage our listeners to get the audiobook there. That platform will provide you, Nancy, with the, the greatest benefit while also being a great platform for the listeners who get to experience your audiobook through the Amplify Audiobooks app and also know that they are having an impact, a positive impact in the world, making the audiobook industry a more equitable place when they buy there. Is there anything else that you would like our listeners to know before we wrap up? Well, people tell me that I have a tendency towards happiness in the face of inequity and trouble. And so I just would encourage people to take heart. Nice. Well said. And yes, very much. Take heart. Thank you, Nancy, for being with me today. This again is Nancy Martin, author of From the Summer of Love to the Valley of the Moon, a memoir. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. From the Summer of Love to the Valley of the Moon, a memoir by Nancy Martin, narrated by Carol Robleski, is now available on AmplifyAudiobooks.com. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.